Amen. You know, we were blessed last week by our senior pastor who opened us up with the theme of the month, which is divine progress. We thank God for, she has finished the whole preaching. All I've come to do is just to say, amen, so shall it be, let's go home. I was trying to prepare, and all I was preparing was everything she had said. I said, so what have I come to do? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, but I thank God that um, the Bible says that the word of God is new every morning. So even if it's the same thing, the Holy Spirit interpreted new in your life in the name of Jesus. So the topic that we're going to be hearing today is divine progress. Praise the Lord, somebody. The topic we're going to be listening today that God is going to minister to our heart is divine progress. You know, progress, advancement, movement, these are attributes and characteristics of anything that is living. If you are alive and there's anything living in you, you have to experience progress. You have to experience acceleration. You have to experience movement. Things got to move consistently. You can't be stagnant. If you are stagnant and stationary, it is not part of the quality of a living thing. Praise the Lord. Because God has created you and he has a law that you should be fruitful and multiply. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about divine progress. So which means that for every living being, for everyone who is seated in this auditorium, you are meant to progress in the name of Jesus. You are meant to advance in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, when we talk about this, it is a law from the kingdom of God. Let's quickly look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. God created man. God finished the creation of man. And God looked at it and said, you know, man has to progress. Where is it? He said, and God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle. Praise the Lord. So God created man and said, you know what? You have to have dominion over everything. He said, be fruitful and multiply. So it is a natural, spiritual, and physical law that progress is your portion in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? It is not just a spiritual law. It is a spiritual law that is implemented and comes into application in your life, even in this physical realm. Praise the Lord. Because God says, may you dominate wherever you are. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. So everything that is living, everything that God has created, as particularly human beings, God said you should be fruitful and multiply. Praise the Lord, somebody. You know, let me define progress, define progress for us. Divine progress is the supernatural ability of God applied to your life to make you move forward in an unusual way. Are you listening to me, somebody? Divine progress is the supernatural ability of God that is applied to your life that will make you move forward in an unusual way. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says that promotion does not come from the east, not from the west or from the south. Hallelujah, somebody. He said promotion, whether it's increase, whether it's progress, whether it's acceleration, it doesn't come from the east. It doesn't come from the west. Neither does it come from the south. But the Bible omitted the north. That's because that is where God sits. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Let's look at that. Book of Psalm chapter 84, 48, verse 2, quickly. Psalm chapter 48, verse 2. We all know this. It says, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. It's Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. The Bible says that promotion does not come from the east, not from the west, not from the south, but from the north. That is why Psalm says, I will look up unto the hills from where's coming my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. So this is what progress is. It comes from the Lord. You know, it's important that I, we note this hour that it's possible for you to progress. It is possible for you to accelerate. It's possible for you to advance without God. 
Are you hearing me, somebody? It is possible for you to progress. It is possible for you to advance. It is possible for you to accelerate without God. Even in your own lives, there are things and decisions that you have made. There are steps that you have taken that are not in the will of God, but you progressed anyhow. People who commit evil, the scammers, people who commit demonic things, they progress in their evil doings. So it is possible for you to progress again without God. Praise the Lord, somebody. So I want us to understand that, that you seated here today can definitely progress without God. I know most of you are looking at me like, what in the world are you talking about? Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. You know, the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. For the blessings of the Lord, they make it rich, and he added no sorrow to it. So when the Lord blesses you, there is no sorrow. When the Lord progresses you, it is different. Praise the Lord. I give you two examples. Do you guys remember the story of Cain and Abel? The Bible says that Cain and Abel came to give offering unto the Lord. And God chose Abel's sacrifice. And Cain was jealous. Cain killed Abel. Praise the Lord. Cain killed Abel. I want us to look at Genesis chapter 14 from verse 16 to 17. Cain killed Abel and God said unto him that he shall move his face away from him. God told Cain, as from today, my presence will no longer go with you. Because he have done such a thing like this, he says, my presence will no longer go with you. Praise the Lord, somebody. But the Bible makes us to understand that Cain moved on. He had families. Cain was the first person that built a city. He progressed even though the presence of God did not go with him. Cain progressed even though the presence of the Lord did not go with him. God was so mad at him. God was so disappointed in him. And he said, from today henceforth, my presence will not go with you. But the Bible gives us an account. Cain is the first real, real estate manager that we have in the Bible. The Bible said he had so many children and he built for himself an estate. So he progressed even without the presence of the Lord. Can you believe that? He progressed even without the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Another example I want to give us is the building of the Tower of Babel. Let's quickly look at book of Genesis chapter 11 from verse 1 to 6. The Bible says that the people gathered together. They gathered together and they said among themselves, we shall build a tower high up to meet God. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. It says, and the whole earth was of one language. Now listen to this. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shina. Dwell there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Can you believe that? Let us build for ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach heaven. <laughs> Verse 5. He said, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad unto the face of the whole earth. First and foremost, that is what, not what God said. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Here, they were in disobedience with the law of the Lord. They said, we want to stay together and build a tower to go to heaven. Amen. Verse 6, real quick. He says, and the Lord said, behold, the Lord, God himself said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this is they begin to do. That is this thing that they began to do. <laughs> and, and now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Huh? Can you believe it? They are building against God. God himself stood aside and said, if I don't intervene, these people will succeed. So God was not in their progress. 
God was not in their situation. God was not in their plan. Their plan was contrary to the will of God. Their plan was against what God has said. And they were planned to build a tower. And God himself got worried and said, if I do not, if I do not intervene, these people will reach to me. So I'm saying this to make you understand that God was not in that plan. But they progressed anyhow. Are you following me, somebody? God was not in that plan, and they progressed anyhow. And God said to them, nothing that they have imagined, nothing that they have imagined that they cannot do. So it's possible for you to progress without God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. So it's possible for you and I to progress without God. But that is not what we're talking about today. We're talking about a divine progress. We're talking about a progress that God himself will equip you with the ability and the capacity to succeed in the name of Jesus. That's why the Bible says there is a good success. There is success and there's a good success. Amen? But this morning, I want you to understand that we have unto us a divine capacity, unction, and ability to succeed in the name of Jesus. That when God causes you to progress, it shall not be like unto those who do not do it without God. Are you following me, somebody? You know, in Germany, they decided to punish some children of God. There was this soldier there. He never, you know, he was very wicked. They did things. I think I've shared this here before. They even asked the children of God to use their feces for communion. They asked them to use their pee for blood, just for mockery. You know, but what I want to get out of this is, he said to himself, I thank God whom I don't even believe. That he lived to fulfill the wickedness in his heart. Are you following me, somebody? So you can progress and succeed even in your evil doing. But we know that if, because it is not of the Lord, it will end in doom. Because it is not of the Lord, you will suffer destruction. Because it is not of the Lord. The Bible said that ill-gotten wealth will suddenly turn gravel to your mouth. Praise the Lord. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. I said that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. But this morning we're talking about divine progress. The supernatural ability and capacity that God is going to give to you. That you're going to accomplish things that are unusual. That men will look unto you and they will wonder. How did you accomplish this? Now, the supernatural ability does not regard your qualification. It does not regard your status. It does not regard who you know or the connection you have. When the supernatural ability comes to you, even the earth will stand still and celebrate the glory of God over your life in the name of Jesus. I say, earth will stand still and celebrate the glory of God in your life in the name of Jesus. You are, you are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar generation unto God. So when you begin to progress, it is not like that of the world. Praise the Lord. Because God, the Bible says that God himself what made deliver the children of Israelite from bondage of 440 years. Do you know what that means? <laughs> Let's read this. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 6. Are you following me somebody? 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 6. He says, and Samuel said unto the people, it is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. <laughs> Are you following me, somebody? It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. It was the Lord that liberated the children of Israelite from the grip and the claws of the Egyptians. It takes God, the supernatural ability to deliver you from everything that has held you down all these years in the name of Jesus. And when the Lord delivers you, you begin to see his miracle even as he begins to cause you to progress. Praise the Lord, somebody. You know, the children of Israelite, when, they, when the Egyptians released them, suddenly they realized, oh my God, what happened? Why did we release these people? The Bible says that they got 600 horsemen and began to chase after those that they delivered. After those that they allowed to go. 600 horsemen 
with chariots, chased after people who were walking on foot. But because it was the Lord that advanced them, they couldn't catch up to them. The enemy cannot catch up to you in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord has advanced you, it doesn't matter the equipment they have. It doesn't matter the technology they have. It doesn't matter their connection against your life. They will never reach you or catch you in the name of Jesus. They suddenly decided to pursue the children of Israelites. 600 horsemen with chariots. And the Israelites were walking on foot. The Bible says that as they were approaching the children of Israelites, because it was the Lord that advanced them, there came before them a pillar of fire. So shall be your case in the name of Jesus. The every enemy that has chased you because the Lord has delivered you, the Lord shall be unto them as a pillar of fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Lord has propelled you, because the Lord has caused you to accelerate, because the Lord has caused you to progress, no enemy will catch up to you in the name of Jesus. Because the hand of the Lord is upon your progress. They chase them. But when they got close, the Bible says that there was a cloud that went with the children of Israel like a cloud. That's a pillar of cloud to protect them from the sun. And at night, it became like a pillar of fire. Praise the Lord. So when God is decided, when you begin to experience divine progress, the handwriting of God is in every step of your progress in the name of Jesus. I said the enemy cannot catch you in the name of Jesus. You know, even when they slept at night, the Bible says that God removed every tire that they had in the chariots just to give you an advantage. May the Lord give you an advantage in the name of Jesus. They woke up in the morning and they said, ah, we have to catch these people that we let them go. We have to catch these people. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. They said, we have to get back these people. How can they be released? How can they be set free? This is impossible. But before they could finish their thought, the angel removed all the tires on their chariot. The God will cause your enemy to have confusion in the name of Jesus. I said, God will slow down your enemies for your sake in the name of Jesus. Because he has given you divine progress, every attempt, every agenda of the enemy will be frustrated in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, I want you to understand that. When God begins to give you this divine progress, understand that it's not a smooth journey. Are you following me, somebody? Most of you don't like this area. It is not a smooth journey. The children of Israel, they confronted a lot of things as they began to journey to the promised land. Last week, Pastor Greg was telling us they were thirsty. They came to a place and they found Mara water, water that was bitter. But because it is the Lord that advanced them, it caused the water to become sweet. So every bitterness in your life, God will sweeten it in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you didn't hear me. I say every bitterness in your life, God will cause it to be sweet in the mighty name of Jesus. Because it is God that has advanced you. There is no obstacle, there is nothing the enemy will put on the way that God will not use for your favor. The Bible says, all things work it for good. For those that love him are called according to his purpose. The way up for God is down. Praise the Lord. Are you following me, somebody? And look at the story of Joseph. Just imagine Joseph. God has told him, you shall be a ruler. God told him, you shall be a king. And while he was just, you know, getting that his future has been predicted... He was sold as a slave. While he was still there, as a slave, they made him a servant. And yet, God had plans for him. Yet, the Bible says that was divine progress. It's a divine progress because, you know, I don't know what situation you're going through. I don't, I don't know what chapter of your life you're in at this hour. I don't know what obstacle you have in your way. I don't know what dark period you're going through. Just know that God is with you and he has plans for your life. The Bible says, and God was with Joseph. Praise the Lord. He went through the pit. He was sold as a slave and he became a servant and went into the prison. And these are all the journey progress in his life. So when you go through this situation, my brothers, my sisters, just know that God is trying to equip you to have that character that perseverance, that faith to make sure that you're ready for what he wants to hand on to you.
So do not complain when you begin to go through this situation. Just know that your situation is an occasion for God to showcase himself in the name of Jesus. God will never abandon you. Praise the Lord. He is with you always and continually. Hallelujah. You know, most of us begin to complain. Most of us, we begin to worry. Most of us begin to question God when we begin to go through some situations in our lives. But because you're a child of God and you are aligned in his will, God is giving you divine progress. It may not be as smooth as you see it. It could be your health. It could be your job. It could be your relationship. It could be any situation in your life that is not pleasant at this hour. But I want you to know, it is all God's plan for you. Are you following me, somebody? It is all God plans for you. That's why the Bible says that the thought for God for you is of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? God is not a liar. He said he's, he's, he said he's going to deliver you. He said he's going to give you that promise. So when you begin to go through those situations, you don't complain. Praise the Lord, somebody. You know, I, I've shared with us here the story of the eagles. You guys remember the story of the eagles? <laughs> the eagle and the eaglet. Now, the story of the eagle is likened unto God and us that are seated here today. You know, the story of the eagle, every day, when the eagle is about to lay eggs, it plucks the feather from its chest area and makes sure that the nest is well padded. It's very comfortable for the egg to be, brought, to be laid. And it builds around it a lot of things with sticks so that there's comfort in that zone. Praise the Lord. Every time the eagle travels, he goes to get food and he feeds those little eaglets. But one day, the eagle comes. He does not perch on the edge of the nest. He hovers over the nest in silence. I can imagine the eaglet saying, wow, what's wrong with mama today? Why are you hovering? What's going on, mama? You're just quiet. He becomes unusual. He's still in the air. That's why the eagle can mount the wind. He stayed still over the eaglets, just watching them. Just like you're going through situations and problems in your life. And you're looking up to God and it looks as if God is nowhere. And it looks as if God is not listening. And you ask yourself, oh my God, where is God? You're asking yourself, what is pain? Why? Because it looks as if everything is quiet and silent around you. And you're confused in that situation. Just like the eaglets are confused because the mama eagle has never done that before. But the eagle is watching how it's going to begin to destroy the nest. Are you following me, somebody? With a twinkle of an eye, he begins to flap his wings very hard as if he begins to attack the nest and is flapping his wings so that all those feathers that he puts there will all be blown away and the tongues begin to poke the eaglets the tongues begin to poke the eaglets and they're very uncomfortable i can imagine the eaglet saying oh my god mama eagle is crazy today i don't know what's going on with mama eagle what are you at is this our mama eagle you know, like most of us ask, is this God? What is going on? This cannot be God that I'm going through this situation. This cannot be God that I'm going through what I'm going through. This cannot be God that this situation is before me this way. The eaglets are confused. Like, what is going on? Unbelievable. You can imagine the first time in their life, their, mom, their mother is attacking them. And is not saying a word. And the eaglets are confused. I can imagine the little one, like most of us here, you know, when I was thinking about it, I thought about Caleb, saying, oh God, why, 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 why? Let me talk to God. I know him. Hey, ma, 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 can you stop doing what you're doing? <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. And then he begins to attack the nest and break the nest. Break off every edge of the nest. Science has proven that at that point, it begins to push the eaglets away from the nest. Praise the Lord, somebody. I don't know, are you here today? It looks as if God has left you. Are you seated here today? It looks as if situations have turned around. It looks as if God is against you. It looks as if God has opened the floodgate that the enemy should attack you. No, you're in line with divine progress. The eagle is not doing that because he wants the eagles to die. But he knows it's time for them to get to another level. And to get to another level, you must get the training that you require. 
So you're going through that situation because God is equipping you for the next level of blessing that he has for you. God wants to equip you. God wants to fortify you. He wants you to be ready for that situation, that place that he wants to take you to. Because as he begins to push the eaglets, they refuse to spread their wings and he catches them and he brings them back and he pushes them down again and he goes again. He catches them and he brings them back. If they, don't, if they refuse to spread their wings, he keeps doing it till they spread their wings. And when they spread their wings, they say, Mama, thank you. This is what I wanted. I didn't know I could do this. So when you're going through that situation, God is equipping you for the next level of blessing that he has for you. I want you to know that you don't complain because God, God, God has plans for you. Praise the Lord, somebody. Science has proven that if you take an eaglet from there, Pastor Sam, and put the eaglet without the mother training the eaglet, on the ground, it will never learn to fly. Because it is that height of fall to be able to mount the wind. So I want you to know that that situation you're going through, God has plans for you. He has given you divine progress. The progress of God may not be smooth. The Bible says that God himself lifted the poor from the dust. He lifted the beggar from the dungeon. He established them with kings so that they can inherit the glory. So shall be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is taking you through this situation because he has greater plans for you. The Bible says he's the only one that sees the end from the beginning. You might complain. You might question yourself. You might cry. You might worry. You might look up and say, what is going on? But God has a plan for you. You are in line with his divine progress. Those are steps of progress. Because God wants you, if you're not walking, he wants you to begin to run. If you're not running, he wants you to begin to fly. If you're crawling, he wants you to begin to walk. And if you're flying, the Holy Spirit will help you. Praise the Lord, somebody. Divine progress. It is the plan of God. But it's important for us to know, what are the enemies to this divine progress? Praise the Lord, somebody. I want you to write this down. The first enemy to divine progress is discouragement and fear. Are you following me, somebody? When you begin to go through those situations, you get discouraged. When you begin to go through those discouraged, you have fear. You know, the definition of fear is false evidence appearing real. And when you're discouraged and you have fear, you're unable to tap into the things of God. Because discouragement and fear is contrary to faith in God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. You know, it is okay for you to have fear in life. But the Bible says, be of good courage that he has overcome the world. Courage, I want us to understand the definition of courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Are you following me, somebody? Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the proactive step you take towards that fear. Are you listening to somebody? So discouragement and fear are enemies of divine progress. That was why the children of Israelite were supposed to be liberated and go to their land of promise for 40 days. But it took them 40 years because they had fears. They were always discouraged. Can you imagine all the miracles that they've experienced? And once they got to a place and they saw the children of Egyptians coming, they went on to Moses and said, Moses, why have you brought us here? Is there no grave in Egypt that we should die? But yet they just saw the hand of God a minute ago. And they became afraid. That will not be your case in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7. Are you following in this house? God will grant you divine progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hand of the enemy that is setting you back by the reason of the unction in this house, you shall experience divine acceleration in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord shall give you capacity to begin to forge ahead. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind. Praise the Lord, somebody. He hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Because when you trust in the word of the Lord, 
When you stand upon the word of the Lord, you realize that every fear is false evidence just appearing real. And your proactive step towards that fear is faith unto God. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible for you to receive of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when you begin to go through those challenging situations in your life, when you begin to go through those down moments in your life, do not be discouraged. Do not fear. Just trust the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord says that his thought for you is of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. That he that has started a good in your life is faithful to the end. Because the Lord has begun with you, he will definitely take you to that place of promise. Someone said, it is God that advanced Moses and Aaron. It is God that is advancing your course in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, it is God that is advancing your course in the mighty name of Jesus. Another enemy of progress is disobedience. Disobedience. The Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden because of disobedience. Disobedience to the word of God will stand against the progress that God has put before you. You're the only one that can slow the rate and the power of the divine ability that God has given unto you. When you begin to showcase discouragement and fear, when you're disobedient with his will and want to do your own thing, then you cut in the way of the process of God. The Bible says that as Joseph went through this situation, that God was with him. He never forsook God for once. He never complained about God for once. But yet, he had to go down in order to rise up to become one of the greatest people in the land of the Egypt. So shall be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. I didn't hear you. I said, so shall be your case in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I stand here under the auspice of the Holy Spirit. And I speak to everyone listening to me. That God shall grant you divine progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Every word you've experienced said by God shall give you acceleration in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as God advanced Moses and Aaron, God shall advance you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you're a child of God and you are lying and stand upon the word of God, God will definitely come true for you. You have to forsake sin. Praise the Lord, somebody. Because God detests sin. You see, when you begin to do things that are sinful unto God, you push him back, you slow, and you extend the rate at which God wants to progress you. Sin. I have to be careful saying this. I want you to understand this. Simply missing the standard of God. If there's anything you're doing in life that is not in line with the standard of God, that's sin. That's what the Bible says. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Are you following me, somebody? Sin is the greatest tool that the enemy uses to slow that progress that God has given unto you. In every area of your life, in whatever you think or do, if it's not within the standard of God, then that's sin. Praise the Lord. And that's how you slow the progress that God has for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why the Bible says you should confess your sins unto God. Continually confess your sins unto God. Because by confessing your sin unto him, he will forgive you. And it will realign you with the progress path that it has for you. Amen, somebody. The Bible also says that where you have weakness, you should confess your sins with one another. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when you're confessing your sins to one another, be very, very careful. There was a story of um, three powerful prayer warriors, Pastor Sam. They went fishing and they were in a boat. And these are three great ministers of God. You know. And as they were going, they said to themselves, you know, the Bible says confess our sins to one another. You know, it's just three of us here. We have to open up and let's just confess our weakest points to one another. 
The first one said, okay, well, okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. I have a problem with gambling. I'm a powerful man of God. I preach, but I have a problem with gambling. And they both say, oh, we're going to pray for you. God will strengthen you. God will give you grace and ability <laughs> to overcome this sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the second one said, well, I have a problem. I take money. I steal. I just don't know. I just do it. You know? He said, I love God, but I just find myself doing this. And they said, wow, okay. We'll pray for you too, you know? And the third man refused to talk. And they were like, in this boat, you must talk. This boat, <laughs> except it sinks, it must tell us your sin. And they probed him and probed him, and he refused to talk. And the other two said, we just confessed our weakest points to you. And you refused to talk? And the guy said, my weakest problem is gossip. And I can't wait to get out of this boat. <laughs> I cannot wait to get out of this boat because the world will hear this today. <laughs> Only God knows what happened to him with that boat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you're confessing your sins to one another, be very, very careful. Firstly, confess your sin to God. Amen? And God will align you with his will in the name of Jesus. I say God will grant you divine progress in the name of Jesus. No enemy will be able to withstand the progress that God has said before you. No mountain shall stand against the progress that God has said before you. Whatever you set your mind to do, God shall make you accomplish it in the name of Jesus. He will give you the will and the capability for you to forge ahead. Every acceleration that you require, God shall grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Time is over. Okay. Tools to divine progress. Just before we finish real quick. You have to connect with God. Tools for divine progress. You have to connect with God. You make sure you have a relationship with God. John chapter 15 from verse 5 to 6. Hallelujah. John chapter 15 from verse 5 to 6. He says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abided in me, I, I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. Are you listening to me? If you abide in him, he will abide in you, and you will bring forth much fruit. That's what the Bible says. You will progress because you're connected. See, for without me, you can do nothing. Are you following me, somebody? You make sure that your relationship with God is intact, that you're connected with God. Because when you're in him, then he's in you. And without him, you're not able to accomplish anything. Hallelujah. Because of time, real quick, the next one is the word of God. Are you following me? The word of God. There is no divine progress or advancement outside of the word of God. Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3 real quick. You have to study the word of God continually. Because the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Are you understanding me, somebody? But your delight is in the totality of the word of God. The word of God are the laws that govern your life because the Bible says that God rules in the affairs of men. And it says, and in this law does he meditate day and night. And because you meditate upon the word of God day and night, the Bible says, and that you shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Are you understanding me, somebody? For you to begin to tap and begin to cause this divine progress to come to bear in your life with speed, you have to know the word of God. You can't do it without the word of God. Hallelujah, somebody. The word of God has to be richly in you. And the Bible says, because you meditate upon this word of God day and night, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Which means you shall not lack any good thing. 
And at your season, you shall blossom. So whatever thing that is required that you need in the season of your life, God will grant it to you. Amen. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 8 to 9. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 8 to 9, somebody. Hallelujah. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Now listen to this. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Are you following me, somebody? For when you do this, the Bible says, for then, for then means because you are meditating upon the word of God. Because you're holding upon the word of God and standing upon the word of God. The Bible says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. There's success, there's good success. But this is a success that God gives you because the word of God is reaching you. Hallelujah, somebody. And then lastly, you have to be prayerful. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. You must be prayerful. Verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20. Is the master key. He said, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, which exceeds your imagination, abundantly, which is so much that you never lack, above all that we ask, all that you ask or think, according to the power that works in the inside of us. Praise the Lord. I pray that God shall grant you divine progress in the name of Jesus. If you're seated here today and you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the first step into aligning yourself with the divinity of God. And for you to begin to bring into activation and into reality the divine nature of God unto you. If you're here and you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ, all you have to do is open your mouth and confess that he is Christ. You believe it in your heart and confess that he is Christ. And all this divine progress will be your portion in the name of Jesus. You know, I stand here as an oracle of the living God, tapping into the grace upon the set man and in this house. And I proclaim that as you have heard today, nothing shall stand against your progress in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are crawling, you shall begin to walk. If you are walking, you shall begin to run. If you are running, you shall begin to fly. Every challenge is in your life, the Lord shall see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. For it is the Lord that advanced a run and most the Lord shall advance you in the name of Jesus. From today henceforth, the world shall await the manifestations of the sons of God. The world shall celebrate you for what God is doing in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Progress is yours. Progress is yours. Financially, academically, socially, morally, mentally, in every area, in every space of your life. God shall grant you progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Massachusetts, 02021. Or give us a call at 781-821-1121. Or feel free to give us an email at admin at fountainofgracebos.org. Or visit us at our website at www.fogbos.org.